Hey, what's up, guys? A spicy skeleton's prince bait deck just charged its way to the top of Clash Royale. In a Clash Royale meta where everyone is playing Cannoneer, this deck is the ultimate villain. Countering the best decks in the game, leaving them no way to win. The ranked 7 and 11 players in the world are both using this deck. This deck's sinister bait spam with the Mortar Evolution, Skeleton King ability, Skeleton Dragons, and Goblin Gang can engulf a tower in a couple seconds. And with the splash damage from the Mortar, Arrow, Skeleton Dragon, Skeleton King, and Bomber, it's easy to get a Prince to be the MVP. Cleaning up distractions so the Prince can charge on high value targets. Most bait decks have major weaknesses to Wizard and Splash damage. But with Prince, Skeleton King, Mortar, and Miner to tank, your Goblins and Skeletons won't get melted. Let's ride with our Skeleton Spam to charge up some ranks and assert dominance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. And big bait love to everyone that's supporting the channel with credit code SIRTAG. Alright, my man's got the swords in the banner and we're ready to slash through his defenses. Push, push, push! Dude, we are going to be pushing our limits of offense right now. Going for a Goblin getting the right side and possibly going in for a Skeleton King because our Goblins are bound to die. There's no way that those things are surviving for long. Wait, wait. This could be bad for both of us. I don't know if the Mortar's smart enough to kill that Spear Goblin. I think it is. I believe! Yo, Spear Goblin's gone. We forced out a log from our dude and a Miner. Miner is a mischievous man. He usually has a plan of attacking the tower. But I guess in this roundabout way, he might still lock under the tower for one shovel slap. Nope. Denied. All right. We're going to Miner with the rest of our counter-pushing Skeleton Dragons. It might not be insanely lucrative for us, but I want to still go for arrows. Because if we are able to kill the Knight and not spend any extra elixir to counteract those Spear Goblins, I think it's overwhelmingly good for me. Also, definitely can finish that off with the Cannoneer. If you guys didn't know, Cannoneer allows you to fully counter Wall Breakers if there is no tank. Even if the wall breakers seem like they're close to your tower, they will die to the cannoneer for a negative two trade for the opponent every time. So that's why cannoneer is like one of the better defensive options right now in the game. It's generally better than a princess tower and the princess tower is better than the dagger duchess. There's levels to it, guys. And it's cool that at least the common version is better than legendary, but cannoneer being epic is very overpowered against anyone that is running a wing condition because you can just counter it like... Watch these. They're, they should just die with only a little bit of damage. As you can see, only one of them exploded on the tower. Not super scary or anything like that. Skeleton Dragon is going to die to the Cannoneer before any damage, right? Oh, no. We do get one hit. I'm surprised by that, honestly. All right. We do have to arrows this because the Cannoneer main weakness is against bait cards. So if you are able to complement your Cannoneer with splash damage from Skeleton King, from Mortar, from also probably arrows and Bomber most of the time... That is going to be the way that you can justify using Cannoneer in your deck. If you don't have a deck built around defending bait cards, you're probably not going to be able to use Cannoneer in your deck at all. Anyway, we're going to go Goblin Gang here, and that should be more than enough unless this guy decides to get really aggressive with me. You shouldn't have to spend anything else on the left-hand side against those bats unless they're evolved, but even then, it's like super scary. All right, let's go for Prince. I wonder if we're going to be able to get counter push because I don't necessarily care about the tower damage here. I more so care about the counter push. That's how we're going to win the game is with this mortar. We're forcing out a lot of elixir here. We definitely are going to get him in a bad spot where we can evil bomber on the miner. Oh my gosh, we're holding it in place with the mortar goblin as well. Nice damage. And the bomber's still alive too. So forcing out a lot of elixir like this is hilarious because he doesn't have a way to finish off the skeleton king besides the log, right? You can't rely on using the bomb tower because we should be able to arrows that down along with the bats. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. That arrows pierced our opponent and sent him all the way down. So as you can see, because everyone is running Cannoneer, says it is the best tower in the game and all pros are playing it. You can counter it using Skeleton King and an immense amount of bait pressure. After stealing our opponent's clan strategy, we've push, push, pushed all the way to 4,000 in the world. All right, guys, we are going for five wins in a row. And this guy had the Ice Spirit in the banner. Y'all already know that we're going to be jumping all over his tower like an Ice Spirit would. So our motto is spam like a senseless fool. With this deck, that is generally what you want to do if you can drop a mortar and have someone that's running Cannoneer. They're not going to be able to easily defend your stuff. Sure, you can go for a wizard and a rage, but even with two splash damage sources, you are still in a situation where you have to deal against the prince, the skeleton king, and the skeleton dragons that are coming at you very soon. Ooh, he's got the dankest of darkest princes. Round one, fight. Not very scary for me because all I need to do is go for arrows to pummel the shield, and then I hit the hull and clean up the bats. As you can see, even though arrows are getting a nerf, they're not a bad card. It doesn't necessarily matter because you're getting so much utility. They're very quick. 
and they remove air and ground cards, opening up opportunities that you wouldn't be able to get with other cards like a log. Okay, he's got a giant. Right when we go in for that, I bet you he goes in for a wizard. Oh, wait. He's going to avoid. That's a negative one trade for us, but it is a couple mortar shots. So not bad. We know for a fact that he is going to wizard us. And it's going to be evolved this time. So I have to Prince on top of it because the Prince does not get back. I, yeah, it doesn't get knocked back by the wizard shield. So you want to think about like what will die, what will be a bad time. And if uh, you're dropping something that's a bad time, don't do it. <laughs> this is the main thing. That is the main motto. You only want cards that will give you good trades here. So the Prince will be wonderful. It should be able to pop the shield. And then I'm pretty confident the wizard doesn't do too much damage. So I'm just going to let that go. I'm going to Miner here. And I fully expect him to tr try to defend this minimally. Uh, never mind. He's going to spend a lot more than I thought he would. All right, we can arrows. Don't think that was the best decision, but I was kind of hoping that we'd be able to kill all the bats. Still killing the bats was necessary because otherwise our cannoneer just doesn't clean them up. We're going to go in for a mortar here. Fully expect him to go in for a void. If he goes wizard, we might be able to bomber on this. I don't know if it's dumb. It might be super smart. Yo, it worked. That was pretty cool. Blasting the tower twice. Not going to lie. I'll take it. I'll take it because no wizard in cycle means I can go goblin gang. And then we can force out the Dark Prince, which then dies to the Cannoneer. And I don't have to spend any Elixir because our tower on the right is way less healthy than the one on the left. So we can eat some damage here. All right, we're going to go Miner and we're going to go Prince. And we're going to go in for probably a Skeleton King on defense after we Arrows him. Oh, he is. He is going in. He is going in for the win. All right, we want to go Arrows. And then we want to go in for Goblin Gang. I think that we're okay on defense because all we need to do is shut down this Giant. He did miss the Rage, which is huge. And then we can go for a miner. Please stop that wizard. Oh, Harry Potter has seen a scrumptious treat in front of us. And uh, we do not want to admit defeat against Harry Potter. It is not the sorcery that we want. We should be able to destroy him. I think I can pop a Skeleton King ability, go in for a bomber, and then walk away with a dominant win. But despite our opponent having Wizard Void and Dark Prince, he still wasn't able to beat our bait deck. And that's the reason why I like this thing so much. There's maneuverability to beat splash damage counters to you. And that doesn't happen in most bait decks. But with Prince and also having the Skeleton King as massive meat shield so you can soak up the damage for your glass cannons like Evolve Bomber, Evolve Mortar, and Goblin Gang. And we're on our way up, already at 3,700 in the world. Luis! All right, so this guy's got Goblin Drill Evolution in the banner. You already know if he's unlocked that card, he is probably playing it. And also, you guys can see another cannon near player. Oh, even if you use Princess, it does get sniped by Goblin Gang, so that's fun. I don't think I get damage, do I? Oh, I get a little bit of a goblin slap. No, I got two of them. Yo, how do we bop? Okay. Okay, Mortar's really, really good into Sus Bush. Sus Bush does not have the vibes against the Mortar. So we can do this. I have the Skeleton King. Possibly going for Skeleton Dragons. I mean, screw it. Let's arrows on this. I think it's just better. Oh my goodness. There ain't no way I'm getting these types of trades today. This is insane. And then we're able to go Goblin Gang off on the left. I don't know if y'all saw that, but the Cannoneer targeted the correct Goblin first on the right. The inside one closer to our King Tower. So then we were able to finish off the rest of the Goblins. Goblins on Goblins action out here. Well, this guy is also proposing an action of defending this Princess at every possibility. I don't love this for us because I do think it's going to be difficult for us to break through and damage down this Dark Goblin if he tries to protect it. But, ooh, okay. Now yeah, let's go Mortar. Not our best look, not our best vibe, but... It does work out and force out a Goblin Gang. So the thing is, if the Goblin Gang is split, then I don't have to respond with a lot of Elixir. So I'll take that trade. The Sus Bush is mad annoying, and I think he is going to get some damage on us with it. Because I, I don't have a building right now. I don't want to arrows it. I think I'll have to use Skeleton King and overspend. We'll see, though. We shall see. Wait. Oh, he did nothing. How did he literally do nothing there? Yo, that's miraculous, my brother. Okay, okay. That was not even a prediction, but we'll take it. I can't lie to you guys. I'm never going to lie and say it's a prediction. <laughs> we'll say it's calculated. We're saying that we're doing big things only, but sometimes <laughs> I will get extraordinarily lucky. I'm going to go Goblin Gang because it's going to fuel our Skeleton King, and I think this is going to be beneficial for us in the long term. Definitely want to go and use that to the best of our ability with a Bomber and then also... Maybe even get some extra value with the Prince because the Goblin Gang's out of cycle. So how is he expecting to deal with this? I mean, my long lost brother from another mother, I think you're going to lose. I, I, I don't know if this bait can beat us. Oh, wait, I just arrowed and hit this Princess Tower. Or the King Tower. Oops. That was not good. I, I, was that tactical BM, guys? I, I don't know about that one, big dog. I don't think that was my smartest decision in my life. I don't know what I'm doing. 
I'm trying to make this game harder for me. And let me know if you guys have ever fat fingered in the comment section. Let me know if you guys are as big of a failure as I am. That was really bad. Okay, so we're gonna let that lock and then we're gonna bomber because we wanna cycle a little bit quicker to our bomber evolution. And then we're gonna go in for our skeleton dragons. The cool thing that we have here is the capability of making more predictions that I'm not even trying to do, obviously. That is the way that we play Clash Royale, apparently. For the arrows, we're gonna go Goblin Gang, and then he's definitely gonna go in for more bait cards. So we have to go and pop the ability here if we can, that would be nice. We need to go in for a miner on top of the princess and then get back to another arrows, ideally. If we can just get the Skeleton Dragons on the tower, we will win the game. Doesn't even matter that I activated King Tower. We are on a relentless rush up the leaderboards, wrecking everyone that we play against. After slapping down three opponents in a row, we have pushed all the way up to 3,200 in the world. In a complete cannon year meta, this bait deck is unbeatable. Hey, we are ready to steal Arthur's King Tower. This guy is a rank 700 top ladder player, so definitely not someone to laugh at right now. He's probably laughing at me, realizing that the skeletons will deal damage to my tower, so I don't want that to happen. I'm gonna go for a Skeleton King and also go in for Goblins. Pretty good position for our dude, but at the same time, you have to understand that it's not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to destroy a king of skeletons. He is a scoundrel, he is a sir, and he is ready to have a really spooky sight for our opponent. Going in for the ability there, forces out a cannon and then also a bunch of extra elixir in the form of skeletons, ice spirit. So he's probably winning this game right now, if I had to say honestly, but at the same time, I'm feeling good about ourselves. We now have identified that he's running a 2.6 Hog Rider deck, which I thought was done and dusted. I thought it was archaic. I thought it was in the caveman ages, but this guy is rebelling. He's like, Take, we're taking caveman tools into the future. And uh, we'll see how it works out for him. Anyway, we're gonna go for a mortar here. And then uh, I expect him to go musketeer after this bomber dies, which should be very soon. Hate evolved skeletons so much, but maybe we can kill the prince on the muskie. Very cool. Oh, 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 wait. We're forcing out a cannon. That's huge. Not only are we gonna be capable to cannonball with a mortar shot, but putting him in a position where he has to cannon there is not where he wants to be. So if you're foolish, you might go skeleton dragons, kill the cannon, and then just overcommit really early on. But I think we will go skeleton dragons afterward. Possibly go in for a snipe on a musketeer if we're lucky. He's gonna log it. No, I knew he was gonna do it. But he was waiting a split second, so I didn't think he would, and then he did it anyway. This guy's mind games are masterful. Okay, Skeleton Dragon, say less, Skeleton Dragon. Pre arrows, pre arrows, the ice spirit, pre arrows, the ice spirit. Yo! Look at those plays! We're on fire right now, because I, I knew exactly what he would do, since that's what I would do. I'm, I'm around his rank, right? We're, we're top 1,000. He's uh, well, on top 1,100, but he's, he's around the same rank as me, all right? Okay, guys? All right, all right. Not going great, though. He, he's playing this super well. Very good player. If we go Miner and we force out Skeleton and then we go in for this Bomber, <laughs> this could be funny. Oh, it didn't work because he dropped a really, really good cannon placement. All right, we have to Prince here and then I think we can eventually afford the Mortar. Ooh, baby. It's a difficult one. It's a spicy one, Mr. Sir. All right, I was going to say Mr. Grinch and I stopped myself. I don't know why. Anyway, looking like we can do this, this, possibly just Bomber on this business. Oh, we're dead. We, we Unless, unless... Unless the King of Skeletons can resurrect our chances of winning. Come on, Skeleton King. Be the sir that you always knew you could be. No, maybe? Maybe? Oh my goodness, it's so freaking close. I'm dropping a Goblin Gang into a log because I need the Spear Goblins to lock on the tower. No! <laughs> King Arthur ended our win streak. Really fun game. Phenomenal log. Mind games from our opponent. The prediction on the Ice Spirit almost put us back in the game but it was difficult because he just played so darn well at the start. If there's anything I could have adjusted from that game is I wouldn't have dropped the Goblin Gang into the log that I knew was inevitably going to come down. Instead of being greedy, trying to save the maximum damage possible, I should have accepted the damage that I was guaranteed to take and then thrown more stuff back at my opponent. I surely would have won that match. If you're predictable against top ladder players, you're destined to get destroyed. The one difficulty of that matchup is since I don't have Fireball or any way to clean up stacked up Musketeers, I felt pressured to be a bit more aggressive in the game. Instead of being a silly sir, I should have just played standard and then I would have got the W. Especially with that arrows outplay on the Ice Spirit. It's time to bounce back in this one. This guy is going to be running Bomber and also a Evolved Drill most likely. So not necessarily going to be the easiest matchup in the world, but it would not be the Clash Royale meta unless we matched into a Goblin Drill deck. 
the strongest evolution in the game right now, bar none. So I think we can go arrows here. Oh my gosh, are we gonna captivate the skellies too? That's insane value. I love the fact that he had to log the left-hand side despite his right side burning up. This bro is absolutely annoyed. So I think it's better for us to go in for a mortar here, predict a bomber, and try to go for our own bomber on it. It's ideal to do plays like that if we can. Uh, or actually, let's just minor on the bomber. Oh, he's going to Tesla and then bomber? I don't know what he's doing. I'm confused. It almost worked out really well if he would have evolved bomber there, but I guess he didn't want to. He's just going to Tesla instead. Take the safer route and the better option if he wants to play aggressive with the bomber on our tower. I'm going to go for a goblin gang here because it's not a good defensive card into someone that's going to have goblin drill evolution because the goblin drill just pops up and it does more death damage every single time or it does like spawn damage every time. It's really annoying. The good card that we have is skeleton dragons. That's hard for him to deal with. I think if we go Skeleton Dragons in the back and then we go in for a Skeleton King here and then we arrows away on the bomber, that's the best possible play. That's what we're going to do right now. Just can't eat any damage against that bomber. And also getting a decent trade with the Skeleton Dragons and also a good trade with the Skeleton King enables us to do that type of offensive play where we arrows on a negative elixir trade like that bomber. So I'm going to go in for our Evo Bomber here, but first I want to go and click the Skeleton King ability to keep our opponent preoccupied. So I want his attention diverted on the left, and then we're going to commit some theft. Look at that damage, guys. We force out a log and an Ice Spirit, and we still get a silly connection. So we are cruising here. I fully anticipate him to go in for more stuff, so we're going to wait with our arrows, then we're going to take it last possible second. So it looks like to me that he's not running the deck that I thought he would. So instead of running the Bomber Evolution, I believe he's probably running Evo Tesla. So yeah, he is. Really interesting stuff. All right, we're going to pop the ability here, which generally isn't a good decision, but I just want to get that off the map so possibly we can get one mortar shot on the tower. Also, we want to go for a Bomber as well because I believe he's going to try to go Tesla and I don't want that to happen. So what can we do here? Is there any way? I mean, we have to arrows this because the, the log coming through, I can't let that Ice Spear connect to me. All right, if we Miner, that's a little bit stupid. If we go in for a Miner plus something else, it's a bit better. I could go in for Skeleton Dragons and Miner. And the reason why I'm thinking that is he doesn't have anything besides Tesla. And if he uses his Tesla on that, then the Mortar might connect to the tower. Skeleton Dragons are coming through. The Tesla is really low. If that Mortar just shoots the tower, we would kind of win the game, but it didn't work out that way. He's definitely going to go for a Log soon. Super sketch for us, honestly. Like, not loving this position at all, at all. But maybe we can just continuously pummel him with Skeleton Dragons. Like... That is the strat. When you identify your opponent's weakness, you continuously apply pressure with that card. Skeleton Dragons are so difficult for this guy to defend. We're going to go for a Prince in the front. We can Evo Bomber on this knight. We found an opportunity, guys. There ain't no way he's happy about that. Now we can Miner in front. Possibly go for arrows on Skeletons because he's going to have to drop them. Love hitting arrows like that. Making predictions against one elixir cost cards is maybe the thing that I'm most known for in today's video. <laughs> like, I'm hitting Ice Spirits, I'm hitting Skeletons. We are merciless like that right now. All right, we're going to go Skeleton King here, and then we're going to go in for a Bomber in the back. This is really bad for us because I don't know if the Bomber is able to kill the Goblins. Super tough stuff. Bro, Skeleton Dragon barely locking on the tower. All I need to do is go for arrows, and we win with the dying breath of the Skeleton Dragon. <laughs> I mean, it was probably a Baby Dragon before. It died again. It became a skeleton dragon, and then before it died a second time, it killed our opponent's tower too. It's beyond underrated going minor skeleton dragons against drill decks that aren't built to beat them. Bro. Bro. Give a fiery blast to the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more daily content and have an amazing rest of your day.